Hey there guys, welcome back to the Modern JavaScript Crash Course. In this video, we'll be taking a look at JavaScript arrays and also taking a look at array properties and methods. As always guys, if you're new here and like the content, don't forget to like and subscribe and make sure you turn on notifications so you never miss an update. So before I explain what an array is and how it works and why it's useful, let's first take a step back and remember back to our lesson on data types. Now if you remember back to that lesson, I spoke about how we have primitive and non-primitive data types. Primitive data types were things like numbers or booleans or strings, which are very basic and can only hold one value. Whereas non-primitive, which are objects and much more complex, can hold more than one value, which we've seen in the previous videos when we looked at built-in objects. Now arrays fall into this category of non-primitive data types, meaning that we can store more than one value under one variable name. And this essentially just brings us to our explanation of what an array is. An array is a single variable that is used to store multiple elements in an ordered list. So to put this in a visual perspective, what I'm gonna do is just paste a list of variables inside our file here. And as you can see now, we have five variables here and they're all closely linked as they represent all of the oceans in the world. Now writing them out like this, is actually quite unproductive because if we want to output these variables in our console here we need to console log them five times which again is not a very productive use of our time what would be more productive is actually creating an array and placing all of the values inside of that one array so it's stored under one variable so what i'm going to do now is just put all of these values inside one variable so i'll just paste that in here and as you can see we've got one variable here called oceans and all of these values now inside of this array and again, this just demonstrates how arrays can be much more useful. Instead of creating those five variables for those values, we now have one variable which stores all of these values. And if we want to access these values, all we need to do is just log it in the console once. So we'll log oceans. And as you can see in the output, we've got our array here which has all of those values which we can now access. Now this example here is just one way we can create an array. There are in fact two ways we can create arrays in JavaScript. This example here is the array literal, which uses square brackets as you can see here. The other way is through the array constructor, which uses the new keyword. So what I'm gonna to do to demonstrate that, I'm just gonna duplicate this. And then after the assignment operator here, we just use the new keyword and then grab the array constructor, close it off with brackets. And then what we do from here is insert the values inside of the brackets here. So I'll just grab all of these values and insert them inside here. And then just to show you guys how this is working, I'm just going to comment out the first example. And as you can see, it works the exact same way, but instead of square brackets, we're using the array constructor, which works by first inserting the new keyword and then the array constructor. Now, both of these ways will create a new array. However, the array literal, which is this example here, which uses square brackets is the more common and preferred method as using this new array constructor here has inconsistencies and sometimes unexpected results. So for the rest of this lesson, we're gonna be using the array literal. So I'm just gonna delete that and then uncomment this. Now it's important to remember here with JavaScript arrays is that they're accessed by referencing their index number of the item. This is because arrays don't actually have a name value pair and the index starts at zero. So if I open up this array here, you can see our first item here, which is specific, instead of starting at one, actually starts at zero and the index finishes at four, despite there being five items. So this might confuse people at first, but just remember that with JavaScript arrays, the index value begins at zero. And because arrays are ordered lists, it's actually quite easy to access these values using the index. So let's just say we want to access uh, the Arctic Ocean, which is the index of three. We'll just go after the oceans here, use square brackets, and then just insert the value of three. And as you can see, it's given us the value of Arctic. Again, because arrays are ordered lists, and if we want to access any of these values here, we do so by referring to that index number. So now we have a better understanding of what JavaScript arrays are, how they work and why they're useful. Let's now take a look at array methods and properties. So what I'm going to do first is just create a new array and we'll call this array C creatures followed by square brackets. And then inside here, we're just going to have our C creatures. So first we'll have a shark. Then we'll have, uh, let's have a turtle. And let's also put in here, let's say a whale. And then the last one, let's just have an octopus. And then let's just log this into the console. So we'll log in C creatures. And as you can see in the output here, we now have our object here. Now the first property of the array we're gonna look at is the length property. So we have our array here and let's just say we wanna find the length of this array. We can use the length property. So we'll go after the uh, array name here, which is C creatures and we'll say dot length. And as you can see, we're getting the value of four, which is the amount of values we have inside of our array here. 
Now we can also use the leg property to find out what our last item is inside of our array here. So to do that, we'll just get rid of dot length here. And as we've just learned, to access the items in our array, we use indexes. So after the variable name, we'll use the square brackets. Then to gain access to the items inside the array, we'll use our variable again, see creatures. And then we say dot length minus one. And as you can see now, we're getting the output of octopus. Again, the reason we're getting the output of octopus is because of the way it's indexed. Our first item here isn't starting at one, it's indexed at zero. So our last item here, the octopus, is indexed to three. So dot length is four, minus one is three, gives us the output of octopus. Now another cool trick of the length property is that it's mutable, meaning that we can change how many items we want to show in our array. So the way we can do that is if we just get rid of this section here, go underneath this array, and we'll say C creatures dot length equals, let's say, uh, let's put in here a value of two. And as you can see in our output now, we no longer can see the whale or the octopus items. We only have the shark and the turtle. Now it's important to notice that once we've mutated the array, any items that follow after this number don't actually exist anymore. So just bear that in mind when we're mutating the array using the length property. So that is how we can use the length property for our arrays. Let's now take a look at some of the methods. So we'll just get rid of this. And then after C creatures, the first method we're gonna take a look at is the includes method. So we'll just put in here dot includes. And what this method essentially does is it just returns a Boolean value if an array contains a specific value. If it doesn't, then it will return us a false value. So we're just gonna put in here, let's put in here turtle. You can see we're now getting the output of true because inside this array, we do have a value of turtle. Now it's important to remember the includes method that it is case sensitive. So if I change this to lowercase turtle, you can see we're now getting the output of false because JavaScript actually sees these two things differently um, despite them actually meaning the exact same thing. So just important to remember that it's case sensitive. So the next methods we're gonna be taking a look at is how we can add elements to the front or to the back of our array. So if we wanna add the element to the front of this array, we can use the unshift method. So first I'm just gonna log C creatures again into the console just so we can see our array there. And what I'm gonna do is use the unshift method to add another element to the front of our array here. So in front of the shark. So we'll say unshift. And let's just say, uh, let's add let's add a starfish into this array. And as you can see in our object here, if I open this up, we now have a starfish that's indexed at zero. So using the unshift, we've inserted this starfish at the front of our array here. Now, if we want to include the starfish at the end of this array, instead of unshift, we use the push method. So we'll just get rid of unshift and insert push. And if we open this array up now, you can see the starfish now is at the end of the array. So again, if we want to add the element to the front of our array, we use unshift. If we want to add the element to the back of our array, we use the push method. Now these two methods here have their own counterparts, meaning that instead of adding an element to the front or the back of our array, we can remove the first or the last element. So if we want to remove the first element here, we do that with the shift method. So if we want to remove the shark, we'll just say shift. And if we take a look at our array now, you can see the shark is no longer inside of our array. And then if we want to remove the last element from our array, we'll do that with the pop method. So if we take a look at our array again, you see the shark now is back, but the octopus, which is the last element in our array here, no longer exists inside of the array. So that's how we can remove elements from the beginning or the end of the array. So we've just learned how to add or remove elements either at the back or the front of our arrays. The next method we're gonna take a look at takes this even further. So let's just say we wanna remove specific items inside of our array and even replace them with new ones. Well, we can do that with the splice method. So let's say we wanna remove and replace the turtle in our array here and replace it with starfish. To do that, let's first get rid of the pop method here and we'll say splice. So inside the method here, we need to add a few values. The first thing we need to do is grab the index number of that element, which we want to uh, remove and replace. So the turtle, if we open this up, is indexed at one. So the first value is going to be one. And the second number we put in here is how many items we want to remove from the starting point we set out, which is index one. So we only re want to replace the turtle. So we'll say one in here. And if we take a look at our array now, you can see that turtle is no longer inside of our array. So you can see with the splice method already, we can remove any um, element inside of our array anywhere within our array. Now, not only can we delete any items within our array, with splice, as I mentioned, we can replace that item we just deleted. So instead of having turtle, let's replace it for starfish. 
And if we want to insert the starfish, we need to insert one more value in here. So we'll just put in here brackets and we'll say starfish. And if we now take a look at our array, you can see at index one, which used to be turtle, which you can see up here, has now been removed and been replaced with the starfish, which we inserted in our splice method here. Now it's also really important to note here that when we're using splice, once we've defined our values inside of the method here, this results in an entirely new array. It no longer is this array, it's been completely changed to this new array that you see here in the console. Now another special use of the splice method is the ability to add an item anywhere we want in our array. So let's just say we don't want to replace the turtle here with starfish, but we want the starfish to come before the turtle. All we need to do is just go to our second value here and change this to zero. So if we open up array here, you can see now that the starfish now occupies the first index. So instead of replacing a uh, turtle with starfish, we've included starfish into our array. So as you can see, the splice method is a pretty cool method. It can be used for a multitude of things inside of our arrays. We can add or remove certain elements in our array, or we can insert and replace them with different values. Or as we've just seen, we can insert values anywhere we want inside of the array. Now, another thing we can do with arrays is actually combine two arrays together with a concat method. So what I'm gonna to do to demonstrate this, I'm just gonna get rid of splice. I'll also get rid of that console log there and just create another variable I'm going to call this variable uh, C creatures let's say two and the value of this variable is going to be C creatures dot concat which is the concat method and inside this concat method we're going to create our second array so it's just going to be another set of C creatures so we're going to say uh, let's grab our starfish again uh, let's do a say squid Let's do a uh, crab and then lastly we'll just do a uh, dolphin so we have our new array here again which is just a list of new sea creatures and if we log this into the console so uh, sea creatures 2 we should get a combination of both of those arrays so we'll say sea creatures 2 so as you can see if we open this array up We've successfully combined the original array and the new array together inside of this one variable of C creatures 2. Now something to note here when we're using the concat method is that it will not change our original array like it did with the splice method. When we combine arrays with a concat method as this example here, this actually just creates a new separate array. So if I just log in C creatures after C creatures 2, you can see we still have our original array intact. Uh, C creatures 2 now is a completely new array. Again, so that's how we can combine um, two arrays together with a concat method. Now, the last method we're going to take a look at is the sort method. So what I'm going to do is just get rid of C creatures here. So we have the array which has all of the uh, creatures combined together. And what I'm going to do is sort these out so they're in alphabetical order. So we do that again with the sort method. So we say dot sort, close these off with parentheses. And if we open this up now, you can see all of our values here are now in alphabetical order. Alright guys, so that's some of the array properties and methods. There are a few more which I will leave in the description for you guys to check out. And to summarise this lesson, arrays have many useful methods and properties that we can use to do cool things. We can combine arrays together, we can add values at the beginning or end of our arrays with the push and unshift methods. We can also do the opposite and remove values at the beginning of our array or at the end of our array with the pop and shift methods. As well as being able to sort out our arrays alphabetically with the sort method. And we can also insert, add, remove, or even replace elements anywhere within our arrays with a splice method. As always, guys, if you enjoyed the content, please hit the like button and please consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next video.